welcome back to another one of my videos. As always, I find these stories that I read to you from different subreddits on the Reddit website. And I always leave a description. Sorry, a link in the description. <laughs> so that way, instead of watching the end play through the video, you can read along if you would like to. That said, let's get into the video. Television of fear. When I moved into the old brick apartment on Elm Street, a relic of the building's past remained. An ancient looking television set, its wood veneer faded and the glass screen clouded with decades of dust. Considering the place was unfurnished, I found its presence odd. My inquiries with the landlord produced only a non committal shrug, so the TV remained, a quirk of my new abode. One exhausted evening, having spent the day unpacking, I switched it on, half expecting it not to work. But it did. The screen lit up with a grainy black and white scene. Curiously, there were no channel numbers or volume buttons, just an on slash off switch. The scene showed a familiar looking diner. Patrons sat at the counter, their faces obscured by the grainy quality. As the camera panned, I caught a fleeting glimpse of someone I thought I recognized. Then the angle shifted, showcasing a lone woman sitting at a booth. It took me a moment, but the realization hit hard. It was Clara, my ex-girlfriend, looking distressed. The diner's backdrop matched the place where we had our final bitter argument. I sat up straighter, intrigued yet puzzled. What was she doing on this old TV? Why was she looking around in panic? The scene changed, showcasing a room in disarray. I felt a cold chill creep up my spine. It was my childhood bedroom, untouched, down to the scar on the wooden floor when I dropped a hot iron. A shadowy figure lurked by the window, watching young me, sleeping blissfully unaware of the menacing presence. I clicked off the TV, my heart pounding. The images were too intimate, too real. It had to be some twisted prank. Sleep proved elusive that night. My dreams were invaded by the scenes I'd seen. Clara's terrified face, the intruder in my childhood room. Morning found me bleary-eyed and determined to get rid of the television. But curiosity is a potent drug. That evening, after a particularly grueling day at work, I found myself drawn to the set again. This time, as the screen flickered to life, it showcased a playground. My elementary schools. Kids ran around, shouting and playing. The scene focused on one boy, separated from the rest, looking lost and vulnerable. It was a younger me. The clarity of the footage was unsettling. Every detail was captured right down to the tear in my jeans from a recent fall. As I watched, a group of older boys approached, malice evident in their postures. What followed was a brutal representation of a memory I tried hard to suppress, the day I was mercilessly bullied. The scene transitioned, showcasing various snippets from my life, moments of fear, embarrassment, heartbreak, each more vivid than the last. I recoiled, feeling violated. This wasn't just a TV. It was a mirror into my past, showcasing every trauma and every scar. Determined to solve the mystery, I approached my elderly brother, sorry, my elderly neighbor, Mrs. Green. Her family had lived in the building for generations. So if anyone knew about the TV, it would be her. Mrs. Green's apartment was a testament of times gone by filled with antique furniture and framed black and white photos. She listened intently as I relayed my experience, her roomy eyes widening with every word. The television belonged to Mr. Hawthorne, she began, her voice trembling. He lived in your apartment before you. He was different, obsessed with people's fears. He believed that by witnessing a person's deepest traumas, he could gain power over them. She paused, taking a deep breath. 
He'd invite unsuspecting victims to his apartment, making them watch the television. They'd see their own darkest memories played back, and many left, broken, their spirits crushed. Rumors spread, but no one could prove anything. One day, Hawthorne disappeared without a trace. The only thing he left behind was that cursed television. I shuddered. Why didn't anyone get rid of it? Mrs. Green looked down, her face shadowed by age and regret. We tried. Several times. But the TV always found its way back to the apartment. Eventually people forgot, and it became just another fixture. Determined to break the cycle, I returned to my apartment, armed with a hammer. But the moment I entered, the TV switched on by itself. This time it showcased a scene from mere weeks ago. My mother, frail from illness, lying in her hospital bed. Tears streamed down my face as I relived the moment she took her last breath, her hands slipping from mine. The emotional toll was too much. In a fit of rage and anguish, I smashed the screen with the hammer, shattering it into a thousand pieces. I felt a momentary rush of victory. But that night, as the city's noises faded and the world slumbered, a whisper be beckoned from the ruins of the TV. A soft, static-filled voice, growing louder and more insistent. You can't escape your fears. The weeks that followed were a blur of sleepless nights and paranoia. The television, though destroyed, seemed to have released an entity that clung to the shadows of my apartment. I'd catch glimpses of it, a shapeless form, pulsating with static. It whispered fragments of my memories, taunting me. Desperation led me to seek help, a renowned medium. Madame Celeste agreed to a session in my apartment. The moment she entered, her face paled. The energy here is dark, oppressive, she murmured. The entity born from the television feeds on fear. By shattering the TV, you set it free. I clenched my fists. How do I get rid of it? Madame Celeste closed her eyes, concentrating. It seeks to dominate, to control. You must confront it, face your fears head on. Only then can you break its hold. The medium began chanting, filling the room with incense. The entity emerged, its static form shimmering. As she continued her ritual, the entity displayed a montage of my traumas, each more horrifying than the last. But this time, instead of succumbing to the fear, I confronted each memory, facing them with a newfound resolve. With every confrontation, the entity weakened, its form wavering. Hours seemed to pass, until finally, with one last determined push, I faced my most traumatic memory. The day of the accident. The one I blamed myself for. The one that took my father. The pain was raw, the guilt overwhelming but I faced it, accepted it, and sought forgiveness from myself. With that, the entity let out a deafening scream of static before dissipating into nothingness. The apartment felt lighter, the oppressive atmosphere gone. Madame Celeste, exhausted, gave me a weak smile. You did it. You broke its power by confronting your own. The next day, I cleared out the remnants of the cursed television, ensuring no trace of it remained. Years have passed since that harrowing experience. While the memories remain, the entity's power over me is gone. The television of fear taught me a valuable lesson. Running from my fears only gives them power. By confronting them, by accepting them, I could overcome. I could heal. I still live in the old brick apartment on Elm Street, but it is no longer haunted by a malevolent entity. It's simply my home, filled with light, laughter, and the occasional flicker of a new flat screen TV, tuned to a sitcom, not a horror show. If you liked that video, then like the video. If you're going to bed soon, sweet dreams, and if you have a full day ahead of you, I hope it goes well. Thank you for taking your time to spend on watching one of my videos on my channel, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.